as we uh, move then to the development agreement on Canada Water um, and Councillor Mark Williams. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, so, yeah, page 257 onwards um, of the main agenda. This report sets out how we will um, enter into a master development agreement with British Land with, to underpin the delivery of 3,000 new homes, 20,000 new jobs, uh, and a huge amount of cultural and leisure space um, and huge improvements to the public realm at Canada Water. Um, the report sets out a series of uh, land transactions where we will take in total a 20%, 20 percent ownership of um, the three main sites at Canada Water, those being the um, shopping centre, the print works and the mast uh, leisure centre site, which we currently have no ownership of, so we're increasing the council's land holdings at Canada Water. And also we will be buying in to maintain that 20% ownership across the whole development site to include the dock offices and also the former Rotherhive police station. And by having this equal land ownership across the piece, it means that the development that comes forward will be informed by good design principles based on the very, very extensive consultation that British land have undertaken, um, rather than on who happens to own which piece of land um, today. So it's really good partnership working between ourselves and British land. The report sets out in um, some detail, and the massive development agreement sets out in some detail, that the council will have three options as each plot comes forward for redevelopment, we will either be able to invest in to maintain our ownership at 20%, to either sell up our ownership of that particular plot, or to just uh, leave our land value in there, um, and which will, our ownership will be significantly diluted down, but retain an ownership there. The report also sets out how um, the first phase um, of the master plan to be submitted by British Land will be policy compliant, 35% affordable housing, with 70% at social rents, 30% at intermediate rents, and further, the council will have the first option to acquire the social rent units um, to be delivered as council homes on council rents on secure council tenancies. The report also um, notes um, the work on the social regeneration charter and instructs officers to complete this work on the four themes that have emerged from British Land's work, which picks up on councillor cities and councillor Anderson's early report, which we considered um, today. The report also sets out a capped amount for the um, brand new leisure centre for Canada Water to serve residents of both Bermondsey and Rotherhive to replace seven islands. And this will have the um, criteria that we set out in previous cabinet and IGM reports, um, which will include uh, two pools, including one eight lane, four court sports hall, 150 station gym, three studios, a crash and wet and dry changing rooms unless I'm mistaken. Um, the report also sets out that British Land will be taking on the um, management and investment into Canada Water Plaza outside the library and also Redbridge Square, which is the link between uh, Canada Water and Green and Dock. This is a really significant report and will help deliver much needed homes, much needed new genuinely affordable homes, a huge number of jobs, huge number of training and apprenticeship opportunities um, for our residents and I'd like to commend the huge amount of work that Steve and John James and the rest of the team have undertaken over the last three four years um, to get this report over the line and also for the spirit of partnership that British Land have entered into these discussions and the final thing chair is just to note that um, this report is complete in alignment with the heads of terms which we agreed at September's cabinet. Thank you Mark. Uh, great, this is good news. This is great progress made on this very important <coughs> bit of regeneration uh, in this part of the borough. Hats off to uh, the team, as ever, for all the work that you've done. Um, uh, some tough negotiations, some tough issues to be resolved. Thanks to our um, partners at British Land as well for the work that they have put in to get us to this stage at this point. Um, Fiona. I, I just want to say I think this is probably the, the last big regen report I'll be involved with and, and actually when I joined the council in 2002 I lived in Canada Water and we were talking about the regeneration too and it's great to see uh, us making progress but it reminds me that when you're in regeneration it's about the long haul and these things take a lot of time. Um, I, I love being cabinet member for regeneration, I love working with, with Steve and John and everyone else in that team. Um, and, and I look forward to the day when I go back to Canada Water and revisit it with the pride that I took last summer going to Elephant Castle, using the Castle Leisure Centre that we had delivered, 
free swim and gym at, to go to the St. Mary Churchyard Green Flag Park and the fountains there. And I've no doubt at all that in a couple of years' time I'll be going back to Canada Water and uh, and looking with great pride at what um, Southwark Council has achieved uh, with our partners there at uh, Canada Water too. Thank you. Fiona, uh, Steph. Uh, yes, I also want to say thank you. I mean, it, is, it has taken time, but we can finally see something emerging from it. And I do have, you know, I live in Canada Water and I represent the ward there. So for me, this is really, you know, quite exciting to see what, what is going to be happening here. Um, I suppose one of the things I just want to tease out for from this is um, around the affordable housing side of things. And I know on phase one, it's going to be 35% and the 70-30 split, but actually we're going to, go to take it through planning process for um, future sites. I just want reassurances that that won't um, diminish the amount of social housing. It will always be whatever's in line with policy at that time, um, that we won't get to a situation where we're seeing less affordable, you know, social housing or affordable housing. Um, Um, well, I think what we've lined out there is that it's going to be a 15, at least a 15-year development program, and I think we all know that over that period of time, policy, the commercial realities, and also um, the availability of, of grant are going to are going to change significantly. So that's why we're suggesting in this report that the way we handle affordable housing will be to review it phase by phase and to achieve a policy compliant outcome through that route. Okay, and I know that, um, uh, Maisie, you'd like to highlight the social regeneration themes in the report, or is it going to be marked in it? It's on my thunder. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to draw members' attention to the 59-60, and there's been a lot of work that's gone on with officers and with British Land, and it's really exciting and interesting. Um, and I think the next stage is to really build a structure that lasts long beyond any of us in this room, because as you said, it's 15-year process, so it's about making sure that whoever takes on these briefs, or whoever's in the officer team, or whoever's at British Land, um, is kind of held to these um, to these set of undertakings that we do now, so thank you to everybody who's done it, and it's our first kind of foray into a real tangible um, social regeneration project within the actual living development site, so um, well done, and um, I look forward to seeing the outcomes of it myself as a Southern resident. Uh, thank you, Chair. So I, I, I forgot to mention a couple of things because there's so much in this report. Um, first is that there's uh, many, many matters, for example, car parking, uh, transport impacts that will have to be considered when the planning application comes in through the statutory planning process. Uh, but also just to note um, that we are endorsing the master plan, which uh, British Land have consulted on heavily. And as part of that, under uh, recommendation seven, we're confirming plot A2 for the site for the new leisure centre. Um, this is as requested by the Overview and Scrutiny Committee when this was called in a couple of years ago, that rather than this being done for an IDM on its own, that this is considered as part of the round, um, as part of the wider master plan, which is why it's in here, and that the, um, there will be an impact on the properties backing onto that, and all those impacts will be considered through the statutory uh, planning process. Thanks, Mark. OK, well, there, uh, as you pointed out, nine reference. Stephen. Thank you, Chair. <laughs> I was just going to say, um, again, I'm really proud of this report. I've been working on Canada Water for over 20 years. I started working on the de-designation of the LDDC and the transfer of the assets we're now talking about today, <laughs> including the shopping centre and the print works. And to see the proposals come forward by Bishop Land are just incredibly exciting and phenomenal. This, this sets out a basic framework for our working relationship <coughs> for the next 15 years and beyond. It will deliver over £5 billion pounds of inward investment into Canada Water, which is just incredible, really. Um, when we started talking about Canada Water over 20 years ago, nobody believed it could be part of central London or it was the right location for this quality of development and the quality of the social infrastructure, which will come alongside that development for the benefit of all those residents. <coughs> so I think it's a really in innovative approach as well. Our interests are aligned with British land. We work inside and by side with them. Um, if they're a success, we're a success, and I'm sure it will be a success for everybody and for the residents. Okay. Thanks, Steve. And I think it's worth noting, I mean, this is the second iteration, really, isn't it, down there? Because uh, uh, if you go back in time and watch that brilliant film on YouTube of uh, Southern Council presented by Brian Redhead, 
uh, talking to the chair of planning at the time and uh, the leader of the council at the time about their plans for a conference centre, international conference centre and hotel uh, on the peninsula uh, and the model, which didn't come into being, but the Surrey Key Shopping Centre did. Um, it's, uh, it, it, yes. So, uh, <laughs> so, yeah, we don't want it to be third time lucky, but second time lucky, uh, and I'm confident that this will be a scheme which will last 20 years. So, uh, yeah, absolutely right, Steve. And realise you went back such into the history of. <laughs> it, it's, not, it's not possible. It's not possible. It's not possible. Okay, right. Well, there's, there are still nine recommendations for us to agree on page 258, colleagues. Can we agree those recommendations? Agreed. Agreed. Excellent.